Hi everyone, it's Alan Schimmel, DevOps.com, and welcome to a, a DevOps video chat. Today's guest on our DevOps video chat is well-known DevOps personality, Carmen Diardo, as well as huge Pittsburgh Steelers fan, uh, Steelers fan. Carmen, welcome to DevOps video chat. Thank you, Alan. I'm great to be here. Glad to talk, be talking to you. Absolutely. So, Carmen, to paraphrase uh, a, a religious question, this, this one's a little different than all other chats we've done before in that we've always spoken to Carmen from Nationwide Insurance DevOps team and, you know, where you, you really pioneered a lot of uh, DevOps, not only at Nationwide, but set the tone and the course for a lot of DevOps uh, journeys in, throughout the industry. But now you come to us as Carmen Diardo as part of Tasktop. As you said, I always enjoyed, you know, within the DevOps community, uh, talking to other companies. Um, you know, we talked a lot at, at conferences where I, I was a reference customer for some other customer companies like IBM. And um, I was just really intrigued by Mick's book, which I know we'll be talking about, and, and some of the concepts that Tasktop was was getting involved with because we were a customer, and I really liked their vision. And uh, now I'm here on the, the Tasktop roster, so to speak, uh, working uh, with customers to help them uh, go through the kind of journey that we went through at Nationwide, and also to bring in some of the concepts of mixed book, which I think can take it, you know, beyond to the next level of what we were uh, doing at Nationwide. It's fantastic, Carmen. And I, you know, first of all, I wish you a lot of luck in, in the new position, new sort of career path. And I'm sure you'll, you'll do great because you're, you're just a great person with this. But you mentioned mixed book and I happen to have a copy of it here. It's called project to product. It's by Mick Kirsten. And, um, not to brag, but I, I happen to have a signed by the author uh, copy of it, you know. Anyway, oh, yeah. what, what, and, and I will tell you, Carmen, I, I was fascinated with some of the concepts in the book, and I've discussed some of these concepts with, with people, you know, as part of my DevOps.com uh, communication, and it, and it really is, th this concept of moving from a project centric centric uh it in environment or right to a product centric is is really i mean it's fundamental in a lot of ways right yeah it, it is um so i think you know you know we were at does london and that's where these galley copies of the book came out so the official copy i think um the coming out party officially, I think, is going to be in the Vegas conference, and then the book will be available shortly after that to everybody. But um, through IT Revolution, but it is a fundamental change, and it was something even you know that Mick and I had been talking about, and we had been trying to work through it nationwide because you know before I worked at Nationwide, I worked at Bell Labs for mm -hmm. quite a while, and. And one of the things that struck me when I came to Nationwide was, you know, we went at Bell Labs, we already had this concept of kind of like products, right? Because you had your switches, you had your network control points, you had, so, so work really was, came to the team. Um, and so we were always working on the next set, for example, way back when I worked on advanced 800 feature, you know, features and, and so we had a team that stayed together and the work came to us and we were, you know, we were very focused on our product, that 800 service concept and then the systems that we built. So when I came to Nationwide, what struck me was almost all the work was done through projects and, and these projects seemed to have a life cycle, a lot of them that, you know, got funded as part of the funding for that year. They started up you brought all these people to the team, you went through the norming and forming and storming kind of, you know, parts of the project. And then once they were done, you know, the project dispersed and the people went. And, and what you would do 
what was very difficult to do was if, if a project touched five or six systems, you would start to allocate, you know, we were using clarity, you know, two people, three people, a half a person, a quarter person, whatever you thought you needed from those systems. And, and so it was a very fragmented kind of experience because the project was temporal. You know, the systems people were all s separated and spread out among these projects. Sometimes a person might be working on a half dozen projects at the same time. So, and you know, you were constantly forming in these teams. And so, you know, the idea of, one of the ideas of the product focus is, you know, you have a, a set of people that are focused on that product. They're gonna live, eat, drink around that product. And it may be more than one team. You know, we'd like to say it's a two pizza team that can solve the world's problems, but we know sometimes it's gonna be more than one team, but still their focus is on the product and now the whole idea of bringing them a continuous flow of work, you're bringing it to this established product teams. And the other thing that came up with projects a lot was there was this tension between doing the feature work versus the defects and the risk items and, and some of the technical debt because, you know, project managers were very focused on, you have a budget, you have a set of scope, you're supposed to deliver that. So who wants to pay if, you know, there's a vulnerability in a struts library or, you know, making the next thing faster, right? Technical debt is always about, is really about investing to make the next thing go faster. So if you don't really have a long lived relationship with what you're working on, you know, you tend just because of the make nature of term, it. You make short term decisions. Make short term you know, decisions, right. Yeah, I mean, you know, Carmen, that was one of the things I realized in talking to people about shifting from a product focus, from a project focus to a product focus. And to me, it was almost, you know, I learned a lesson. I, I, I helped take a company public back in the dot com days, uh, 99, 2000. And the difference in how we manage the company from a, as a pre-public, as a private company to a public company just blew me away, right? All of a sudden we were managing in three month cycles, right? Cause right. we were managing quarter to quarter cause we had to just, you know, go to the street and, and tell them our results. And, and you start making decisions that ultimately led to the failure of the company, frankly, because we were making very, very short term decisions that were, were maybe good for the short term, but not for the long term. Right. And, you know, you know, I'm a, you know, we're, we talk about Deming a lot and, you know, Deming warned about things like that, right? About the short term mm -hmm. thinking and the lack of systems thinking, but you're right. It drives you that way because, you know, the market's saying, well, what's your next earnings per share? What's your next report going to be? So, so it does take more, you know, it's a different way of thinking about things and, and really you're more in it for the long haul. Now that's not to say, you can't do things well in the short term because absolutely you can, you can apply all the DevOps practices we've talked about. You can run your experiments, your ideas of what you think, you know, is going to get a value. You can get that feedback much, much more quickly. So you can still apply all the things that we've talked about and, and everything over the last, you know, five, six years, but now you're doing it for the benefit of that product and you can start to, tie the business in with how the value is actually flowing, right? Because, you know, a lot of times, you know, a business doesn't want to go up and show them an agile team board, right? With a bunch of different stories. If they can't relate it to what's the value of what I'm getting through this value stream, right? Where, where is my value? What's going on with what I'm trying to do? And with that product focus, it kind of tears down that, wall and opens up that black box of IT and, and says, okay, all the way from the idea through deployment, it, we're going to make this work visible and, and we can see it and we can make decisions and priority calls based on, you know, how we're going to deploy our resources. And, and it's, you know, it's across the features, the risks, the defects and the, and the investment in debt items so that, you know, we can continue to make this product 
could, not just now, but in the future. So it seems subtle, but it actually it's a very much very different way of thinking. And it even gets back into, you know, how things are funded. So, you know, I think in the past with Agile and DevOps, we stayed away from that left-hand side of the value stream closer to the customer. We were kind of in our comfort zone, but now it forces you to bring, to, to engage the business and really have them come along to the journey with you. So that's another change, I think, in how we, this applies versus some of the things we've done up to this point. I know. I mean, Carmen, I, I, I think you're so right on with that, though, in that it sounds subtle, but yet it's so fundamentally different. And, and my, I guess one of my biggest fears around it is people are so resistant to change. Right. And, and though, you know, maybe that it sounds subtle will we'll help sneak it in, right, as a Trojan horse or whatever, but to tell people that they're going to have to shift the way they think about this, about the way they, you know, go about doing IT and products, they, they, you know, knee jerk is no, we're not, right? They, it's, right. And that makes it hard. It makes it hard. And, and, and that's an excellent point, Alan. And I think we've been talking about this, you know, since I've joined, which it's almost two months now, about the fact that you just like, you know, when, we, when I was at Nationwide and, and, and gave some of the talks with Cindy and Jim, we talked about the journey. We even had that mountain which showed you climbing to the summit. This is a journey, right? And if you start out with this, with what you just said and saying, okay, you can't even get started until you do all these things and they involve the business, you're right. You're going to lose folks right there because wait, I got to change my organization. I got to change how we do funding. I got to change this. So, so the way you have to present it and the way I think, you know, we're looking at it is we're taking the customer on a journey and that journey starts really with, and I used to talk about this with you thinking horizontally, right? So, when you think of a value stream, a value stream starts and ends with the customer. And, and if you start to get people to think horizontally and the concepts across that value stream and the artifacts that flow from, you know, your, your PPM, you know, your portfolio planning through your build cycle, through your deploy, and the fact that in order to get flow, your tools have to be connected, which is where TaskTop essentially has, was started, was around this concept of con connecting your tools, making your tools talk, you know, synchronizing artifacts from tools. So when a defect is created in Quality Center, it can flow into the backlog of your Agile team. When an incident is created in ITSM, it can become a defect, it can flow. So it's really starting with this concept of, so let's start with getting the tools talking. Let's get your artifacts flowing. And even, and this may sound her heresy, even if those artifacts initially are really focused on the work of an initiative or a team or even a project, dare I say, you can still start to, to utilize the concepts in Mick's book around the flow framework and see things like lead time, flow time, um, you know, the flow efficiency, flow velocity, you can still see those things as part of this journey. Now, I think ultimately, yes, you need to turn the boat more to get that product focus, um, to get some of the things, the advantages we just talked about. But you can start this journey, I think, from wherever you are as a, as a enterprise and, and just take those incremental steps in order to get to the point where then you're ready to experiment with one product, right? And then you just want to start with one product, you know, pick, pick one product, get one business owner that is, it's interested in this. And then, you know, from that, you, you even call it maybe an experiment, get some results. And then that's what starts to change the culture, right? It's not going to be me talking or giving talks. It's going to be, you know, I used to joke about this in Nationwide, right? When I would when, when I would go around to different areas and talk, that didn't have near the 
the impact of getting one team to actually do something and get results because then that opened people's eyes and said, okay, that is possible. It's possible right here, right now. And, and I want, I want to create my own story. So, so you're absolutely right. It needs to be structured in a way that allows, you know, companies, teams to go on that journey. Otherwise the impact of the change is going to be too much and, and you're not really going to get any traction. I, I agree. You know, Carmen, it was a, one of the first lessons I learned in business a long, long time ago, which is nothing succeeds like success. <laughs> no, one, no one wants to jump on a sinking ship. Everyone wants to be with the winner. And if you could show that you're winning somehow, that you're succeeding, that you have upside, everything kind of flows from there, right? People want to be associated. And they and they and they're willing to tolerate and even embrace change. In, in some. Yeah, absolutely. And and you know, and and some of the argue, you know, the, you can't you can't just decide you're going to wake up today and change culture, right? No. I mean, you have to do things through the, through what you're talking about, right? Creating those experiences, those successes, those stories. Stories are very powerful. That's what ultimately will change the culture, right? Sharing credit. Right. If if it looks like, you know, it's nationwide, if it looked like, well, this is Carmen's show, that's not going to get anywhere. It has to be everybody's show. It has to be Jim's show and Jane's show and, and Donna's show and everybody's show where they're now getting showing how they can be successful. That then really has the impact of changing the culture and, and showing people that, yeah, this is possible because, you know, that team on the fifth floor is doing this, right? It's not in this book. It's not in this conference. It's, it's that team, you know, it's that team on the fifth floor and, and why can't we do it? Agreed, agreed. So Carmen, you mentioned you've been at Test Time now two months. We spoke a bunch about the book product, Project to Product by, by Test Time CEO Mick. But, you know, the, the Test Time people are really amassed a great uh, murder is row lineup there. They've got you, they've got Mick, and uh, I can't Dominica. Make, Dominica de Grandis, of course. You know, that's a lot of brain power. A lot of brain power over there. What else are you working on? Well, I mean, it, it's obviously a pleasure. You know, the, there's a lot of, you know, it's a great company, it's a great culture, and, and you know, Dominica beat me over here by a few months, but, um, you know, to be able to collaborate with folks like Dominica and Mick and, and, and then just the whole community, right? Because, you know, they were folks that were already in the, the great community that, that, you know, has been built, that Gene's built, other folks like yourself have helped build this whole community. I mean, yeah, it's a pleasure. It's, it's an honor to be able to, to, talk about these ideas. I mean, Dominica's concepts of flow, invisibility naturally just, you know, relate to what we're talking about. I, I thought it was interesting in, in the London talk, the London conference, I mean, like you, you, you go to all these conferences and you can sort of see over year to year what, how things are going and what topics now are becoming more in the mainstream. And there are a number of talks this year that where flow was either in the title or, or key concept. You know, John, Jonathan Smart talked about it. Finn had a talk about flow. So flow is kind of where it's at, I think, now, as, as people are seeing, if I'm going to accelerate my delivery, become more responsive, I got I to gotta understand flow. And as my ex-boss Tom Pater would say, you know, where things aren't flowing. And yeah. so, you know, with Dominica's great work that she's done with making work visible and concepts of flow, her book, uh, mixed book. Now, I mean, yeah, it's, it's a great opportunity to be involved with just a great, great company, great culture and great folks to see how we can help other companies, you know, succeed in the marketplace. I, I think it also speaks to the, the coming maturity of the DevOps marketplace where we're seeing sort of leaders kind of come together, community leaders come together and, you know, in combining in ways that it's sort of synthesis, right? 
thesis synthesis and 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 I think it'll lead to yet another wave of innovation, another wave of, of thinking about these things. Yeah, I agree. I mean, um, you know, I think, you know, people like Gina have done a great job of, you know, of bringing people, creating forums for people to come together. And, and, the, and the community, as you know, and as you contribute to, is very open about sharing ideas, right? So, for example, I would use you know, Topo Paul, we both know of Capital One, I would use his example all the time in Nationwide when people would say, well, we can't do this. We're not a unicorn. We're a regulated industry. I go, well, let's see what Capital One has to say about this, right? They're a bank. They, they, they had a great presentation about with auditing, you know, where, where I think Jennifer Bray was the auditor that came up on stage with Topo and gave a talk. So it's just such a great community where people are willing to share and you're right that allows you know everybody to get better and the whole uh you know the whole community is kind of propelling each other forward so you know it's really a it's really been a great blessing honor to be involved getting to know all these folks and getting to do this kind of work absolutely well carmen we're about out of time but you know i want to wish you luck at Tastop. i i think they're really really lucky to have you um, I'm sure we'll run into you somewhere on the DevOps circuit, conference circuit, and we'll catch up in person. But congratulations on, on the move to desktop. I'm, you'll make us proud, Carmen. Keep, keep innovating, keep leading, and thanks for being our guest today. Well, I appreciate kind words, Alan. It's always great talking to you, and I look forward to keep, keep the conversation going. Thank, thank right. you very much. Carmen Diard, you know, Carmen, I forgot to ask, what's your title at Tastop? Uh, my title is Senior Value Stream Management Strategist. Carmen Diardo, Senior Value Stream Management Strategist at Tastop. Our guest today on DevOps Video Chat. Thanks, everyone. Have a great day.